Hello, Thrivers. Welcome back. Today I'm talking about forgiveness. This is not an easy topic, okay? Especially, especially if you're trying to work through forgiving somebody that maybe doesn't even acknowledge that they hurt you, right? They make it seem like it's all in your head. On top of that, maybe they've twisted reality and they've smeared what's really going on and they make people think that they're the victim and you're the one that that has done all of the harm so they're twisting reality not only in your eyes but in the eyes of maybe people that you care about and on top of that how do you forgive somebody that's not even sorry that doesn't think that that they did anything wrong and that doesn't care about your feelings. That's a delicate topic. I can completely, completely understand because there was a time when I had to get to that state of forgiveness, but it wasn't easy. And it wasn't something that came right away. Okay, so first of all, I say that because if you're struggling, if you're struggling to feel like you can forgive and let go, first of all, understanding what forgiveness is, is going to help, but also understand that sometimes that step of forgiveness, we can't take that until we've taken a few other steps first. Okay. So that being said, let's, let's just dive into this. Okay. So first of all, I think the, the first thing that's necessary is needing to clarify what forgiving means. If you think that for when you forgive somebody that it means that it doesn't matter what happened that um you're okay with it or that they can continue to treat you that way then that's not what forgiveness necessarily means if you think that it means that um by by forgiving them you're letting them off the hook it doesn't mean that either so just put simply understanding what forgiveness means i know in my case was really helpful for me okay um so when i understood that forgiveness really had a lot more to do with me than um it did the other person it was really helpful for example when we don't forgive somebody that's hurt us right that means there's pain there's pain inside of our body and most of the time if we have a lot of pain one of the coping skills that our nervous system kind of puts us in is it, it causes us to feel anger it's like our nervous system sees us feeling pain when we see when we look at our wound and it thinks it's helping us by saying you know don't look at your pain look at what they did don't look at the wound look at the betrayal or the actions of the other person so by looking at the actions of the other person instead of your wound, you feel different emotions. You'll tend to feel angry, right? And anger compared to pain, anger at least helps you to feel uh, a sense of strength. So your nervous system in an attempt to help you, that's a coping skill is to stare at what the person did. And we're going to stare at it. We're going to stare at it. And we're going to bring it up again. And we're going to play the scenario all over again. And we're going to feel that anger all over again. Because the more I do that, the less I'm feeling the pain. So it's a coping, a coping skill. And it's a strategy that it's, it's not a good strategy, right? It's a strategy that in essence keeps you stuck because it keeps you staring at the person that hurt you even if they're gone, like they could be out of your life and you could be, you know, not even seeing this person for years. And you're still so focused on them that you're fueling that anger, which is bad for your body. And you're not attending to the wound. So you're staying stuck. So the reality is, is that when we forgive, what we're actually doing is choosing to let go of the anger the resentment any need or wish for revenge we're letting that go that's what we're letting off the hook 
those emotions, the anger, the resentment, and any kind of need for vengeance, we let that off the hook. And I know that some people might be like, well, you know, if I do that, then that's letting them off the hook. Well, think about it, especially if you're trying to forgive us. Sorry, I got a hair in my eye. <laughs> especially if you're trying to forgive um, somebody that doesn't feel like they've hurt you, right? And somebody that has never validated you before. And you're holding on to your anger and your resentment because you don't want to let them off the hook. But in their reality, they're not on the hook. In their reality, they don't really care, or they're looking at your anger and resentment as evidence that you are the problem. It's not doing anything to somebody like that. It's not waking up any empathy in them. It's not making them wish they were different. It's just hurting you. Okay, when we hold on to anger, we hold, hold on to resentment, our body is in fight or flight. Our body's flooded with uh, adrenaline, with cortisol, with neuroepinephrine, and all of that can make a person sick. Okay, so first point to understand is that forgiving a person is about letting go of the, the emotions that are hurting, not the other person, but that are hurting you. Okay, the second thing that I found important or um, super helpful on my journey to, to let go of uh, anger and resentment that wasn't serving me was tending to the wound, okay? Which means I had to look at it and it didn't feel good, okay? It doesn't feel good to see the, the pain, to see the abandonment, to see the rejection, to see the disappointments. It doesn't feel good to see those things. But until I saw it, I couldn't validate those experiences. I couldn't validate my reality and I couldn't nurture my wounds. Okay. When we can't nurture those wounds, they fuel anger. And then we stay stuck in that cycle. So if you're struggling to let go of anger and resentment, it might be that you have to kind of work through and look at what happened to you. You have to kind of take the focus off what they did, like the external actions, and look at what that did to you on the inside. And then nurture those wounds. Because the more you can heal them and nurture them, then they can stop fueling the anger, and it's easier to let go of the anger and the resentment. And for anyone that's thinking that that's not fair, right? That you have to do that. I just want to say this, okay? If you are trying to forgive somebody that has invalidated you and that doesn't care that they hurt you, the most empowering thing you could ever do and the best revenge you can get without wanting revenge, okay? Because it's not that you're doing this for revenge, but the best thing you can do is get yourself to a place where whatever they did no longer has any kind of effect on you. When what they did doesn't affect you emotionally, that means that that person or that circumstance in your life no longer has control over you. You are empowered despite that person. So it may feel like, oh, why would I have to do that? Well, because that kind of empowerment is pretty awesome. Otherwise, what they did to you stays alive. The wound stays open and gets infected and causes you to feel disempowered, even if they're not in your life. Now, that to me, that to me is super disempowering. Okay. Who wants that? Right. But if you get to that place, where nothing they do affects you, you can now begin creating the life that you want and deserve. And I say that from experience, when you start letting go of the things that don't serve you, you can start embracing the things that you really want to do with your life. And I hope you do that. And I hope you follow this channel because that's what this channel is dedicated for. I really just want to focus on the healing, the recovery of childhood trauma, of complex PTSD, 
and or narcissistic abuse recovery.